Hello everybody, this is the first lecture for chapter 10 of the, the statistical learning course. So uh, this um, chapter is not included in the mandatory material, but because uh, people have requested it, I will uh, do a lecture on this topic, which is uh, very interesting and very useful in practice. So this chapter will introduce uh, several types of uh, classifiers uh, which were mainly used historically in a, in a binary setting when there are two classes but we, which can be extended to the multiple classes case. These uh, classifiers are known first as uh, maximal margin classifiers, support vector classifiers and support vector machines and we're go going to see that the each one in this list are a generalization of the previous one appearing in the list. So this chapter covers parts of chapter 9 from the ISL textbook and parts of chapter 12 from the more advanced ESL textbook. Once again in this chapter I use many figures taken directly from the ISL textbook so uh, I, I'm not the authors of these figures but since the authors uh, allowed using these figures as long as we cite them, then this is what I'll be doing for this chapter. So support vector machines um, is a classification approach that was developed in the, the 90s and which was uh, typically used as I mentioned in the presence of two classes. So when you have class uh, two class, class A, class B, you want to uh, predict the class of a new observation based on its predictor, is it class A or class B, then you could apply uh, this methodology. But the, there were um, more recent developments which allowed using support, or, uh, support vector machines in the context of regression. This is known as a support vector regression. Um, and also, as we said, the methodology can be applied in a multiple class setting, but this is not the traditional approach. The traditional approach was developed in the context of binary classification. And these methods have been shown to, to work well in a variety of settings, so they, they can be an interesting tool to consider if you're trying to do classification in your work. So we're going to see that this method is a competitor to logistic regression and discriminant based methods introduced in earlier chapters. Okay, so we've seen other classification methods in earlier chapter. Well, support vector machines are an additional method that you can try to model uh, some data. And there were connections that have been identified between support vector machine uh, machines and logistic regressions. We won't dig uh, very deep into that, we'll basically refer to the textbook about this, but to let you know uh, these methods, although they're different, uh, there were uh, parallels or connections that were unveiled by some people in the literature. So uh, before I introduce the full uh, general models of uh, model of support vector machines. Let's start with a simpler model which is called maximal margin classifier. So such uh, classifiers they re, uh, rely on what we call hyperplanes. Okay so hyperplanes are basically planes or straight lines in high dimension. Okay so uh, in RP when we have a predictor space in P dimension a hyperplane in that space is defined as the uh, set of points x1 until xp, so set of predictors such that uh, uh, beta 0 plus the linear combination of beta j's xj is equal to 0 for a given set of betas. So each set of betas, so beta 0 until beta p, they, char they characterize one hyperplane. So what these look like, well, if we're in two dimension, the hyperplane is basically a straight line on a plane. And if we're in three dimension, the hyperplane becomes um, simply a plane. 
Okay, so a plane, an R2 surface in uh, R3 uh, dimensional space. Okay, so this is basically the intuition. A hyperplane is basically a plane in higher dimension. Okay, and we're gonna, going to uh, seek a bit of geometric intuition about such hyperplanes because these will be very helpful to develop intuition about the maximal margin classifiers we're going to introduce shortly. Okay, so we basically first uh, define vectors beta star, it's the set of all betas uh, of the hyperplane except beta zero. Okay, so let's go back here. We said the hyperplane is characterized by beta zero and beta one until p. So we can stack the beta one until p into a vector, which we are going to call beta star. And here, x, both phase x is the vector of predictors for a given observation, x1 until xp. And then we're going to uh, want to normalize uh, these vectors for a reason we're, we're going to discuss later on. But we can define beta tilde being beta star, so the set of all betas, beta 1 until beta p, divided by uh, the Euclidean norm. So here I've just wrote the norm, but this is the L2 norm or, or the L2 Euclidean norm of beta star. So basically the square root of the sum of the uh, beta j's square. And here beta 0 is not included, it's just the squares of beta 1 until beta p. Okay, so beta tilde, uh, bold face here, is just the vector of beta 1 until beta p, which are normalized by the norm of beta star. And beta tilde 0 here, same thing, it's um, beta 0, which is normalized by uh, the norm of beta star and where we add the uh, minus sign here. Okay, so um, now why we do that, why we normalize it's because this vector beta tilde has a unit norm here. And this unit norm uh, will make interpretations clearer. Okay, so here the equation characterizing the hyperplane beta 0 plus sum of from j goes from 1 to p of beta j x j so this is the uh, equation characterizing the hyperplane well it can be written alternatively as um, uh, so this is the scalar product between x and beta star and here we can take the beta 0 on the other side place it here so this is uh, we can do that and then we can divide on both sides by the norm of beta star and by definition here this is beta tilde and this is beta tilde zero. Okay so here this equation here it's on an alternative to uh, an alternative way it can be re represented alternatively by this and the advantage of this alternative representation here is that the norm of uh, beta tilde is one. Okay, so we're going to have more meaningful interpretation. Okay, so for a given hyperplane, we can normalize the parameters beta and then obtain uh, alternative representation of exactly the sa same hyperplane as this, but where the vector beta has a unit norm. Okay, so since beta tilde has a unit length, then x transpose beta tilde is the projection, the length of the projection uh, of x on beta tilde. Okay, so if, okay, re recall some notions here. So this is notions that were basically discussed in high school. So when you have a scalar product between x and y, this is equal to uh, norm of x, norm of y, times the cosine of the angle between x and y. So this is uh, this is something we see, uh, let's say, in previous courses in a uh, two-dimensional setting. Well, if, if the norm of y is equal to 1, 
then this uh, this guy simply disappears and this scalar product is x times the cosine of the angle between x and y so here if we have for example vector x oh, oh vec let's say vector yeah vector x vector y here then uh, the norm of x times the cosine is simply if you do like this it it's gonna simply be I'll take another color the length of the segment here which is the length of the projection of vector x on the vector y okay so this uh, was a bit of a, a recall from earlier notions seen for example in linear algebra but here the idea here here is that x transpose beta is the length of the projection of x on beta tilde if beta tilde has unit length and this is why we've normalized beta tilde earlier it's because we want to interpret scalar products as projection length on beta tilde okay okay so let's continue this means that the hyperplane um, x transpose beta tilde which is basically the scalar product between x and beta tilde equals to b0 tilde thus defines the set of all vectors x such that the projection length uh, of uh, x on beta tilde is beta 0 okay so let's draw a little picture here to represent that so here, let, oops, okay, let's say this is the plane R2. And here, let's say we have a vector, let's call it, this is the vector beta tilde. So here, and let's say, um, let, let's uh, here, let's say this is the length of this segment here let's say its length is beta 0 so here the set of all x's such that this equation is satisfied here is the set of all x's such that the projection length of x on beta is beta 0 so this means this characterizes all uh, yeah all the vectors on this plane okay so any vector whose head falls on this plane here its projection length on beta tilde is beta 0 so this equation here uh, represents all the points x falling into this okay so this is a hyperplane we, we see it very well here this really characterizes the hyperplane and we have the interpretation it's all the point x's such that their projection on beta tilde has a length beta 0 okay so if beta 0 is positive it would be on this side but if beta 0 uh, was negative instead it would be a plane on uh, this side here okay so depending on the side uh, the sign of beta 0 here you can be either in the same direction than the vector beta or the opposite direction okay so we see here that the hyperplane characterized by this equation is uh, orthogonal to beta tilde and since beta tilde is just a scale version of beta star then the hyperplane here is orthogonal to the vector beta star characterizing the hyperplane okay so here um, for an arbitrary predictor x0 so if we have a new observation whose predictor is x0 then the distance between the hyper hyperplane and x0 is given uh, by the following okay so here uh, just before I go through the formula I just made a modification uh, before doing the lecture and I there might be a mistake somewhere about the the sine of beta tilde zero okay so recall beta tilde zero it's 
minus beta 0 normalized. So I'll just, while we go through the formulas here, we might identify an error. So I'll fix that afterwards if there's any, OK? So here, the distance between x0 and the hyperplane is uh, given by beta 0 tilde plus here the sum of beta tilde j x0 j. So basically, the linear transform here of the um, the predictors of x by the betas, they characterize the distance between the hyperplane and x0. Okay, so the, the magnitude of the distance is given by the absolute value and the sign of this quantity inside the absolute value will determine on which side of the hyperplane you are. Okay, so, and here, uh, I, because the beta tilts are simply normalized version of the beta, I wrote this here, but this is where I su suspect there might be a minus sign missing here. Okay, so let's go through the, the proof, but uh, we'll, we'll fix that after. Okay, but we can see that uh, indeed uh, the, 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 if we have a new point and if we just plug a new point, the predictors of the new point in, in this linear combination, this will determine uh, or characterize the distance between the hyperplane and that new point. Okay, so indeed if we want to know the distance between a new point x0 and the hyperplane, then what we can do is we can find the point xh which lies on the hyperplane and which is the closest to x0. Okay, so maybe let's draw a little, uh, let's draw our picture again. So here, uh, let's say we have our plane like this and we still can uh, have the vector beta till here and uh, so this is beta till and let's say we have our hyperplane here that we draw earlier drew earlier so let's say that we have a new point here somewhere here and we want to know what's the distance between that point and the hyperplane well the distance between that point and the hyperplane it's basically you need to find the point on the plane here so uh, this guy will be called xh whereas the the pink guy uh, here this is x0 so the distance between x0 and the hyperplane is basically the distance between x0 and the the point on the hyperplane which is the closest to x0 and we can see that the distance between these two points is the same distance than the distance between their uh, oh, I'll take the, the brown color uh, the the distance between the projection of length of this guy on the vector beta tilde and the projection on this guy on the vector beta tilde too okay so we can see that the distance between these two guys is exactly the same than the distance or the length of the, the difference between the length of projections on this. Okay, so such distance between these two points can be written as the absolute value of the diff their difference of projections on. So here I've wrote beta, uh, beta star, but this is not good. This should be beta tilde. Okay, sorry for that. This is another typo. And then uh, the difference of their projection is x0 transpose beta tilde minus a xh transpose beta tilde. Okay, so scalar products here, because beta tilde has norm 1, they can be understood as, um, as uh, the, the length of projections. And here, because this guy lies on the hyperplane, we have that all points on the hyperplane had this guy being equal to um, here okay so this had to be so sorry there there's a bunch of typos in the, this but this had to be uh, beta zero tilde okay so here this should be here and this should be here like this 
and here there should be a minus sign here. So apologies for these typos, I'll, I'll fix that. Okay, so here uh, there's no minus sign here and this is beta till zero and here once again there's a minus sign here which is this. Okay, so this here is um, the, the, sorry, the, um, the distance between x0 and xn. Okay, so here if we do that, if we translate that here, there should be a minus sign. And here, because beta 0 is minus this guy normalized, we have this here. Okay, so we can see that for a hyperplane beta, the distance between uh, the, the, a new, any new point x0 and the hyperplane will be proportional. So this is the constant of proportionality and it's going to be proportional to beta 0 times the linear combination of each predictors with the betas. Okay, so once more apologies for the mistakes uh, on this uh, slide. It's because I did some fixing right before the lecture and uh, obviously I didn't fix it 100% correct. Okay, but the idea is this is the important formula is that for a new point x0, the distance between x0 and the hyperplane is proportional Okay, with uh, the, the constant of proportionality being 1 divided by the norm of beta star times the that linear combination. So we just plug beta 0 plus the linear combination by beta j's of each of the predictors. Okay. So uh, the hyperplane, it separates the space of RP into two. Okay, so here this should be into instead of in. So into two, there are two regions. So here, if, okay, let's say we have hyperplanes here, our hyperplane uh, and our R2 space. So well, this divides the R2 plane into two points on either this part and points are on either this parts. And these set, two sets of points can be characterized by the two following equations uh, or sets, sorry. So on one side of the hyperplane, you're going to have all point x's, x1 until xp, such that the linear combination beta 0 plus sum of beta j xj is greater or equal to 0. Okay, When here the equal sign means exactly on the hyperplane and uh, greater means uh, exactly on one side of the hyperplane and the other set is simply the set of points x such that this linear combination is uh, negative so this is points on the other side okay and we see that hyperplanes are very well suited for binary classifications because you can say okay points lying on one side of the hyperplane they're assumed to be from class uh, one and points on the other side of the hyperplane they're assumed to be or they're classified as class 2. Okay, so um, based on where they fall, on which side of the hyperplane we can classify the various points. A quick note here for convenience uh, of notation in this chapter we're going to denote the two classes as 1 and minus 1. Okay, so previously we used either 1, 2 or 0, 1, but here for notation convenience, we're going to see it's convenient to denote one class as 1 uh, and the other class as minus 1. Okay, so uh, very well, this uh, is very intuitive. So the idea we're going to find a suitable hyperplane to divide the space into two and based on which side of the hyperplane points are going to lie, we'll be able to classify them. Okay, so this is the idea uh, in maximal margin classifier. Okay, so for example, this is a, a simple example. So let's say we have a predictor space in R2. We have two predictors, X1 and X2. We can draw the fo following uh, hyperplane, which is a straight line in this case. And this divides uh, the space into one side where all blue points 
all points on this side are classified in one class and all points on the other side are classified um, as the other class. Okay, so again, this figure is drawn directly from the ISL textbook. Okay, so uh, the let's formalize uh, this a bit more. So the classification problem we're going to handle here is uh, pretty much the same that the one we introduced in chapter five, where we have a set of training observations x1, g1 until xn, gn, where x uh, i is the predictors set of predictors for observation i and gi is the class for observation i here and gi it's between uh, it's either minus one or one so this is how we denote the the two classes okay so um the idea is assume we have a data set uh given training set we'd like to find a, what we call a separating hyperplane, which is basically a set of coefficients, beta zero and beta p, such that for all observations in one class, class one, the linear combination of the predictors, beta zero plus sum of beta j x i j, is greater than zero. So for all observations in one class, we want the observations to fall in one side of the hyperplane with the linear combination being greater than zero. And for all observations in the other class, minus one, we'd like this linear combination to be negative so that the points lie on the other side of the hyperplane. Okay, and this, another alternative way to write this is basically the, the product between yi and this linear combination always being greater than zero. Okay, so if this is positive, y is also positive and this the product is greater than zero or if y i is negative this linear combination is negative also so the product should always be greater than zero so here what we want here is we want we'd like to find a set of betas or a hyperplane such that this um, equation is or in equation is satisfied inequality Okay, so this is an example of a, a data set. So you have blue points in one class, pink points in the other class. And we see that for this data set, there's a bunch of hyperplanes that could uh, class uh, separate the two classes into two. Okay, so we see that the hyper separating hyperplane is not unique in that uh, for that data set. Conversely, for some other data sets, uh, it might be impossible to find a separating hyperplane. So sometimes there exists no hyper, hyperplane, a separating hyperplane at all. And in that case, maximal margin classifier cannot be applied. Okay, so here in that second case, we'll talk about how to address this at later stages uh, or subsequently in that chapter. But let's assume for now that we have a data set where a separate thing hyperplane exists and the idea here is we we'll want to decide on which one we we prefer which separating hyperplane is the most suitable okay so a separating hyperplane will lead uh, as we said to a natural classifier for new unseen observations okay so if we have a new observation x0 with predictors uh, x01 until x0p what we can do, as we mentioned, we can calculate the predictive function f being uh, beta zero, so plus beta j, the sum of beta j's xj, so the linear combination of predictors with betas as the weight. And as we said, we can classify it as class one if that function is greater than zero for this new set of predictors, and minus one the other class if that function is smaller than zero. Okay, so. This leads to a linear decision boundary, which is basically the separating hyperplane characterized by the, the betas. Okay, so this makes sense. And furthermore, we saw that uh, f of x0, so for that new observation, the linear combination of predictors can act as an indicator of confidence about our prediction. Okay, because we, we saw earlier that the absolute value of x0 determines or is proportional to the distance 
between the point x0 and the separating hyperplane. Okay, so if the absolute value of x0 is very large, it means that the point x0 is very far from the separating hyperplane, so we have very high confidence in our classification. Okay, so for example, if we have something like this, so here, let's say we have two points, one here and one here. So for this last point here, we have very high confidence we do well for classification because it's very far from the hyperplane. But if we have, conversely, if we have a point very close to the boundary, we might be less sure about uh, its class. So uh, here, uh, the absolute value of x, fx0 for this point might be very small and for this one it might be very large. So we can see that not only the hyperplane allows us to classify new observations, but by looking at the magnitude of f of x0, it's going to tell us how confident should we be about our prediction. Okay, so the magnitude of the absolute value of fx0 determines the distance between the point and hyperplane and the sign of fx0 determines on which side of the hyperplane uh, you lie. Okay, so we said uh, f absolute value of f of x0, it's proportional to the distance, it's distance, it's not the distance itself. The constant of proportionality, as we've seen earlier, is simply the norm of uh, beta star, so the, the square root of the sum of squared beta 1 plus beta 2 squared until plus beta uh, p squared, as we've seen in slide 8 previously. Okay, so now we know how to, if we have a given hyperplane, or we know how to classify observations based on this and have indicators of confidence about our uh, classification. But as we mentioned, uh, there, there, if there exists a hyperplane, separating hyperplane, then there uh, might exist more than one. And in fact, it can be shown that if there exists a separating hyperplane, there will exist an infinity of such separating hyperplane. Okay, so it's always a, a possible to take a hyperplane, separating hyperplane, and shift it by a very small constant epsilon. And if you shift it by a very, very small amount, it shall still be a separating hyperplane. Okay, unless you're a, you have a very, uh, let's say, a very specific case where uh, you have exactly one hyperplane, but if there's more than one, there's an infinity of hyperplanes, separating hyperplanes. Okay, so in that case, we need a criterion to determine what's the best hyperplane, what hyperplane shall we prefer to perform our classification. Okay, so the maximal margin classifier uh, attempts to answer this question by selecting one hyperplane which will so solve some optimization problem. And the uh, optimization problem entails that we want all observations to be uh, correctly classified first, but second, it's going to maximize the smallest distance between any data point and the hyperplane itself. Okay, so we'd like to find the hyperplane for which the points as are as far away as possible from the hyperplane, so as to be as confident as possible about our pr predictions. Because we said when points are far away from the hyperplane, it means that we're more confident about uh, predictions or classifications generated by the hyperplane. Okay, and the, the smallest distance between any data point and the hyperplane is known as what we call the margin. Okay, so for example, here, this is an example of maximal margin classifier. So for the data set we presented earlier, the blue points being points in one class, pink points being in the other class. Here, we see that uh, the the there are multiple separating hyperplanes, as we discussed, but uh, if we, are try we try to find the one which maximizes the distance between all points and the hyperplane, well, uh, th this optimization was run, and this is the result here. And here we see that uh, the distance between 
uh, the smallest distance between any point and the hyperplane here, this uh, area is known as the margin. Okay, so the margin is basically the area uh, where the um, the distance between any point in the area and the hyperplane is smaller or equal to the distance between the closest points to the hyperplane and the hyperplane itself within the training data. Okay, so here this is the maximal margin classifier hyperplane and here the area, uh, sorry, this area and this area here, they represent what we call the margin. Okay, so the, the points closest to the hyperplane, okay, so those uh, touching the arrows in the previous plot, so if we go back here, I mean these, this uh, point, this point, and this point, these three points are the closest one uh, to the hyperplane and they all have the same distance to the hyperplane being the, the, the size of the margin. Okay, so we see that uh, these points which are closest to the uh, hyperplane, uh, th they all have the same distance to the hyperplane and these are known as support vectors. Okay, so support vectors, they're equidistance to the maximal margin classifier hyperplane. And we see that the maximal margin classifier hyperplane, it only depends on the location of support vectors. Because if you change the location of the other points, unless you change them on the other side of the, hyper, uh, of the hyperplane, uh, you would, except in that latter case, changing the location of these other points, which are not support vectors, they would not change the optimal hyperplane. Okay, so what do we mean by that here is if we took this point, for example, and we shift it from here to here, it would not impact at all the solution of the maximal margin classifier because the maximal margin classifier only depends on uh, the location of the support vectors here. Okay, so uh, as we said, if Conversely, if we take this point and switch it here, then of course it would change the solution because we put it on the other side. But basically, if we don't put them on the other side, the location of all these points, they just don't impact the solution. The solution depends only on the three support vectors here uh, we, we, we've uh, mentioned. Okay. So now let's formalize the mathematical problem uh, that we tried to solve to find that uh, maximal margin classifier hyperplane. The idea here is we want to find uh, the betas, so the betas are basically coefficient characterizing the hyperplane, and m, m will be the size of the margin, such that uh, here the sum of squared betas here are 1. So here I've wrote m is equal to r, but if the, the uh, sorry, the, 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 um, the data set is linearly separable and there exists a hyperplane, here m should be uh, greater than 0 or, or greater or equal to 0. Okay, so we want to find the betas and the margin sides m such that the vector beta has uh, vector beta star has unit norm. So why this? Uh, this is not, we could drop that constraint. Uh, no, in fact, we, we could not. Okay, so, but the idea here, this constraint here, so, sorry about that, but this constraint here is going to be very relevant to um, uh, un uh, interpret what's going to happen because as we said, when we have a unit norm, we can interpret scalar products as projection length on the planes, okay? So here we want to find a unit vector of beta j's uh, and moreover we'd like that the product between the response yi which is my either plus one or minus one and the linear combination of predictors for all points is greater or equal to m. So this equation, what's the interpretation of this? So assuming m is greater than 0, this means that uh, since we have this product, 
all points will be on the right side of the hyperplane for classification. And not only that, this means that for all points, the distance between the uh, separating hy hyperplane and any of points uh, i will be at least greater or equal to m. So the idea here, the problem entails that we try to find the hyperplane and the margin length here, the highest possible margin length here. So as to maximize the margin size, uh, and by that we mean that we like to have all points at least uh, m units apart from the, the, the separating hyperplane. Okay, so we, we're trying to find a hyperplane and a distance which maximizes the distance between any of the points and the hyperplane. Okay, so as we said, uh, the, the, the constraint sum of beta square is equal to one is not constraining the, the hyperplane. Uh, why is that the case? It's because if you just take the betas and you multiply them by a constant k, then this is going to produce exactly the same hyperplane. Okay, so here, if we have this, this is the hyperplane defined by beta, so beta 0 plus sum of beta j, xj is equal to 0. If we just multiply all the betas by uh, k, then we can factor out the, the k here. It means that k times the betas uh, will also be greater uh, equal uh, k times the betas uh, for which we apply the linear combination on the x so k times beta 0 plus the linear combination beta j xj this is also going to be equal to 0 okay so for a given hyperplane if you have the betas for the hyperplane if you just take these betas and multiply all of them by a constant it's going to give you back exactly the same hyperplane. Okay, so the um, hyperplane is invariant to the scaling of the betas. But the idea here is having these, uh, uh, the norm of beta star being one allows us to interpret uh, the, the scalar products between x and beta as um, projection length. And moreover, if we didn't have that, then the idea here is that we could make m being arbitrarily large by simply simply scaling the betas. Okay, so if you're trying to maximize m, okay, well, what you could do here is simply have the betas arbitrarily large so as to maximize this quantity and make m arbitrarily large. Okay, so we cannot uh, drop here this constraint here Otherwise, just through scaling, we'd get an m equal to infinity. Okay, so here we want uh, the betas to have unit norms so that this problem is well posed and you cannot make m arbitrarily large. And really, if you want to interpret m as a distance between the hyperplane and data points, then this condition where the, the betas have unit norm needs to be satisfied. Okay. So here, this is just recalling what we just said. So having the, 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 the norm of vector beta containing beta 1 until beta p being 1, this will allow us to, um, to um, have the interpretation that this linear combination here, beta 0 plus the sum of beta j xij, is simply the distance between the point xi and the hyperplane uh, beta. Okay, so as we said, this uh, this interpretation here ensures that the constraint here that we have says that all the points uh, x's are at least m units away from the hyperplane. Okay, so the distance of the margin is at least m. Okay, now how to solve that problem uh, numerically, we'll just skip the details because uh, for the, the sake of time, there are sources uh, detailing this, but we won't have time to cover this. Okay, so this can be solved efficiently, but details will be unfortunately out of scope for, uh, for this course. Okay, so we'll stop the video here and we'll pursue for, uh, in the, 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 the lecture in the next video. Thank you for listening.